Hello everyone. Today in this lecture, I am going to discuss about the management of placenta previa. So as we discussed previously about its disease condition that what is the placenta previa, what are the types and degree of placenta previa, what is the clinical picture is there. So that all I covered in a previous part. So the link of that video is given in the description box here. So you can watch that video before you watch this video because you can correlate with its management part. So let's talk about its management and what is the diagnostic evaluation is there by which we can identify uh, the placenta previa is there or not and what all complications are associated with this condition. So let's talk about its diagnostic evaluation and if the woman is bleeding after the viability of the fetus the important thing is that once we suspected that the bleeding is from the genital tract after the viability we never ever put our fingers in the vagina of the woman because we already discussed previously that if we are suspecting the placenta previa we will never put any fingers in the vagina because that may cause torrential hemorrhage in women. So if you are suspecting that then the best diagnosis the investigation of choice is the trans abdominal or trans vaginal sonography. It means the sonography is the best method to identify the condition. So uh, yes we can go with the trans abdominal means but uh, with the use of trans abdominal sonography sometimes we are not coming on conclusion that the woman may have placenta previa or not in obese women and uh, if the posterior placenta previa is there then also the presenting part comes in front. So there may be many difficulty with the trans abdominal means and uh, sometimes the woman may have many discomfort with this full bladder. So in such condition trans vaginal mean is more accurate more safe. Yes, we are not putting our finger in the vagina that we are not doing any pervaginal examination to locate the placenta but we can introduce this probe because it is not going in deep. Uh, like uh, if we are putting our finger then we are inserting up to the internal os to locate the placenta and to identify the placental tissue but here we are not putting the probe in deep it is just in the vagina. So it is quite safe as well as uh, it will not cause any brisk hemorrhage further. So we can go with this trans vaginal son sonography because it is quite accurate in comparison to the trans abdominal mean. So the trans vaginal sonography is the safest, accurate and the best method of choice to identify the placenta previa and its various degrees. Uh, we can also go with the MRI which is more accurate because if the woman is having moderate placenta previa that is moderate adherent placenta previa accreta is there. So in that condition MRI is more accurate in comparison to the TVS also uh, because it gives more clear picture. But the portability of this equipment as well as the time consuming process and the uh, it is also costly. So by looking on these all factor we will uh, choose trans vaginal sonography which is quite uh, less costly less time consuming and easy portability of the instruments. So uh, yes these are the methods like trans vaginal sonography as well as MRI is there to detect the placenta previa and its various degrees. So the investigation of choice is the TVS okay. But in some cases like morbid adherent placenta the MRI is best to identify uh, the placenta location how much it is dipped in and along with that we can go with the blood test also like what is the blood group RH grouping as well as the hemodynamic status of the woman but these all come in the management part. So if you are just want to know that where the placenta is going to be located then the trans vaginal sonography is the best method okay and the rest of the investigation are generally needed to manage the woman okay now let's talk about its complication so during pregnancy period if the bleeding is too brisk then there may be a chance of hemodynamic imbalance 
and that may cause shock because there may be a more bleeding that may lead into the hypovolemia so uh, shock may be there and with this two brisk hemorrhage there may be chance of preterm labor as well and uh, various mal presentation could be there because what happened the placenta is low lying and in such condition the presenting part won't be able to engage as well as uh, the placent the presenting part is not getting enough space to descend down so there may be a chance of breech presentation as well as the lie could be changed the fetus may be in a transverse lie so these are the complication that could be appear during pregnancy period and once the woman is in labor then there may be a more chance of cord to be prolapsed because it is lying in a lower segment so there is a chance that cord come first yes and uh, operative interference will be more because practically all cases of placenta previa need cesarean section so there is a chance of more operative interference and along with that the postpartum hemorrhage could be there because the placenta is low lying in placenta previa so uh, the retractive ability of smooth muscle fiber is not that much good as in fundal part so if the muscle fibers are not occluded with a strong uterine contraction then what will be happen the vessels remain open and if the vessels remain open then it will bleed heavily so the muscles will not retract effectively in the lower segment and if the placenta is also too big then the retained placenta would be there it will not be separated easily and if morbid adherent placenta is there in that condition also the placenta won't be able to separate so there may be chance of retained placenta and if the placenta is too big then the tonicity of the uterus is not to be that much good so there may be chance of a tonicity of the uterus that may lead into the postpartum hemorrhage so the pph could be there the retained placenta could be there and uh, during puerperial period as uh, the pph is there then there is more chance of embolism as the vessels remain open yes so solid as well as air could be uh, enter into the blood vessel and sub involution would be there the involution would be retarded as the pph is there and there may be a chance of more infection because of these all operative interferences and uh, the placenta is lying low down so there may be a sepsis so these could be the complication in the puerperal period and if uh, we look on the complication in a fetal part then there may be a chance of low birth weight because there is a chance of preterm labor so the baby will be comes out early and that may lead into the low birth weight as well as the growth retardation in the fetus and sometime with the posteriorly situated placenta what happened the cord may be compressed and that may cause asphyxia in the fetus and the fetuses with the placenta previa have uh, three times more uh, prone to have congenital defects in them and along with that intrauterine death may be there uh, with this heavy bleeding if it is not controlled effectively so these are the complication that are associated with the placenta previa and that could be appear in mother as well as the fetus yes now let's talk about the management of this condition so before we go with the management part uh, let's see that the woman is coming in the hospital what you will do first so once she came and uh, she had a history of bleeding maybe warning hemorrhage is there maybe it is transient or it is brisk whatever the nature of the bleeding is there firstly we'll admit the woman and we'll make sure that the woman must lie in a bed and uh, we'll note the amount of bleeding we'll check her vital signs because we want to know the hemodynamic status of the woman so we can check the respiratory pulse rate as well as the blood pressure of a woman so we can make sure that the woman is hemodynamically stable or not we can assess uh, the woman's abdomen that is we can go with the abdominal palpation to check the status of the fetus okay we can also go with the ctg so that we can assure that the fetal heart rate is okay or not and uh, what is the status of the fetus about its age and its maturity 
what is the week of gestation is there and along with that we can also send the blood for the test of hemoglobin cbc btct and the group and cross matching rh grouping so we can keep ready the blood for if the transfusion is needed so these are the preparation that we must do once the woman came with this condition but if we want to locate the placenta at that time we won't insert any finger in the vagina yes that to be remember now come to the point how we can manage this condition so after doing all this thing it completely depends on three special points that what is the age that is the fetal maturity is there what is the status of bleeding is there uh, is it actively uh, present or not and uh, what is the status of woman is there so these all things are very important when we are managing this condition so there is one conservative management and one is the active management conservative means we need to wait and watch and the other is the active so in active treatment whatever the week of gestation is there we we will not wait more we will just go with the uh, cesarean section so this is the only treatment that we can give to the woman so uh, let's see in what all condition we can go with the conservative management where we can wait more so for that there is a mccafe or johnson protocol we will go with that according to this protocol what all criteria must be met that firstly the week of gestation uh, should be less than 37 weeks and if the woman is hemodynamically stable that is the all blood values are in under control uh, the woman is now no more bleeding that is there is no active bleeding is there and the fetus is also good that is uh, there is the good fetal heart rate is there uh, there is no uh, there is a reactive fetus so if all these four criteria met then only we can go with this conservative management because we are not in hurry that immediately we need to take an action and just do cesarean section so in such condition we can wait and will wait till the uh, fetus is mature and the week of gestation reaches up till the 37 weeks till the term pregnancy reaches till that period we can wait okay so up till that we can wait and then we will uh, plan for cesarean section because practically what happened in any of the placenta previa practically to avoid any risk to the fetus as well as to the mother we just select cesarean section uh, to manage this condition effectively so this is the conservative management but what all condition are there where we can do immediate cesarean section uh, irrespective of the week of gestation so that is called the active management so suppose if the bleeding is continuous it is trickling continuously and uh, the week of gestation is whatever is there the fetus is also uh, compromised like uh, the fetal heart rate is also up and down and it means the fetus is not reactive uh, not reassuring uh, on ctg and uh, whether the fetus is dead also okay or whether the fetus is congenitally malformed the woman is also hemodynamically not stable uh, she is more pallor because of heavy bleeding so these are the criteria where we cannot wait for more and we cannot wait till term so whatever the week of gestation is there in such situation we just take an action that is called active management that we will select cesarean section to terminate the pregnancy immediately so this is the only treatment only management in the placenta previa that we will do but sometime what happened if the placenta is anteriorly situated and if we are giving the cesarean section the placental tissues may be cut and the bleeding is not controlled after giving proper regimens to the woman also in such situation the hysterectomy that is the removal of uterus may also be needed sometimes so along with the cesarean section the hysterectomy could be advised in morbid adherent placenta if the situation is too worse so the treatment is completely depends on the fetal age its maturity 
and the status of bleeding and the hemodynamic status of women okay so according to that only we will select whether we need to go with the conservative management or we select active management okay so this is how we have discussed about the management the diagnostic evaluation and the complication associated with this placenta previa thank you